good evening everyone today we will start with the next uh, topic electron pair magnetic resonance uh, which is similar to the electron spin resonance okay so in short the epr is regarded as uh, electron pair magnetic resonance is regarded as epr while electron spin resonance they are regarded as esr we will be covering both of this uh, topic uh, together because there is a subtle difference between these two techniques okay now in our last class we, we have been discussing about the nmr spectroscopy in the nmr spectroscopy we have discussed about that the readings what we get they are due to the movement of protons within the nucleus okay if you remember correctly what we are having in nmr spectroscopy we are having a sample tube then there was a permanent magnet and then there were some coils which were connected with a sweep generator okay and then there was some uh, transmitter which was transmitting rf pulses and there was a re receiver which was receiving the rf pulses from the sample over there we have also discussed that the frequency of the rf pulses they are constant and using this sweep generator we are basically changing the magnetic field right this was the overall instrumentation of the uh, stuff now why there was a need to use the sweep generator to apply the delta b we talked about that this addition of delta b is necessary to overcome the shielding effect shielding effect of what shielding effect which has been you know, produced by the electrons okay so this was the overall picture of the nmr spectroscopy what we have seen now in the current lecture as you see the name suggests electron pair magnetic resonance or electron spin resonance so here in we will be basically looking into the electrons okay so movement of the electrons in the nmr spectroscopy we were looking into the movement of the protons within the nucleus and basically we are seeing that under a stable magnetic field b0 these protons are processing okay how if you consider an atom so there will be a nucleus and there will be electron orbits now there is a difference in the movement of the protons and the electrons so electrons they are having 
two types of movements. Okay, so one would be when they are moving within their orbit. So orbital movement of the electrons, and second is the electron's position. Second is the electron position. So they, in the first case, first is the orbital, uh, the way the uh, electrons they move over the orbits, and the second thing is that when they press onto their own axis. Okay. So these kind of things are there. However, when these magnetic moments they are being generated. magnetic moments or the magnetic components are being generated <clears throat> these magnetic components are affected by the local magnetic field in the case of nmr the local magnetic field it was due to the movement of the electrons however in the case of epr or esr the local magnetic field it is due to the movement of the protons okay due to the movement of the protons so if you see till now what i have discussed uh, discuss is that there is a huge similarity between nmr and epr or esr spectroscopic techniques are you getting my point now where is the difference then the difference lies in the electromagnetic radiations which are being used for the analysis in the case of nmr we are seeing that we are using rf pulses whereas in the case of epr or esr we use microwave radiations okay. <clears throat> here and also if you see that uh, the epr and the esr it can be performed in two, two ways just like in the nmr in the first way in the first way is that we sweep the magnetic field okay and we keep the frequency constant okay in the second case we sweep frequency and keep magnetic field constant however just like as i told you in the case of nmr that working with the first model where we are sweeping the magnetic field it is easier than the sweeping the frequency uh, frequency components here in the epr or the esr uh, systems also we have a similar type of arrangement usually the practically or the practical devices of epr and esr they have a sweeping magnetic field and we have a Uh, so we have the frequency component of the electromagnetic radiation which is being made a constant parameter okay is there any uh, doubts over no uh, for you which you want to clear if there is anything which you want to get it clear now okay no okay, then i will move forward so <clears throat> we all know 
that electron is a negatively charged particle and it is having a certain mass <clears throat> and as i already told you it has mainly two kinds of movements the first one is the spinning around the nucleus and this brings about orbital magnetic moment where it is given by i equals to 0 1 2 3 and mi is given by minus i minus i plus 1 and so on i minus 1 then i the other type of movement is spinning around its own axis which brings about the spin magnetic moment the spin magnetic moment s is given by half and for each speech, uh, spin magnetic moment you have this magnetic component ms which varies in discrete quantities either plus half or minus half okay now this we have talked about for an electron however we have magnetic moment of the molecules and it is primarily contributed by unpaired electron spin magnetic moment so this spin magnetic moment that means the magnetic field which is being generated due to the spinning of the electron around its own axis it is being used to uh, to uh, find out the total magnetic moment of a particular molecule okay and that too as i have discussed uh, previously also if you have a proton in pair they usually pair up okay similarly in the case of the electrons also if you have paired electrons these paired electrons will pair up and the net magnetic field it would be equal to zero okay hence the unpaired electrons which are having a spin or the spin magnetic moment they are contributing to the magnetic moment of the molecules okay and this magnetic moment of the molecules they are given by capital m s which is equal to under root of s multiplied by s plus 1 and h of 2 by pi so this m s it is regarded as the total spin angular momentum why total because it is giving us a total of uh, a total of the angular momentums or the magnetic uh, component information of the of all the electrons present in the molecule all the sorry there will be unpaired electron okay so all the unpaired electrons this magnetic moment or the spin angular mo uh, magnetic moment it is given by this equation where s is the spin quantum number and h is the planck's constant the next is in the z direction the component of the total spin angular momentum can only assume two possible values ms of plus half and minus half so again we i will go to the x y z axis so here also we will be having magnetic field b0 and we all know this the net magnetization vector due to the movement of the charged particles within the molecules it will be either in favor of the uh, magnetic field or it may be against the magnetic field applied magnetic field the epr or esr spectroscopy is a method of studying materials with unpaired electrons why as i told you previously 
because only it is only these unpaired electrons which are contributing to the generation of the magnetic components the paired electrons they have a net magnetic field of zero i hope you have understood then the epa deals with the study of electron spins that are excited using the microwave radiations similarly we uh, discussed nma spectroscopy here and also we will be using an electromagnetic radiation and in this case it will be microwave radiations and it will flip the low energy state magnetic field to the high energy state magnetic field and when this microwave irradiation is being stopped okay <clears throat> so from the high energy state it would go to the low energy state and while doing so it would release the microwave radiations again and these are being analyzed okay so in the presence of an external magnetic field with strength b0 the electron's magnetic moment align itself either anti parallel or parallel to the field okay either anti parallel or parallel to the field and each alignment they have a specific energy and as i told you in the case of anti parallel moment you will be having high energy state Okay. Now, E, this energy, it is given by M S G E mu B B zero, where G E it is called Landa factor and is the electron so called G factor. G E is equal to 2.0023 for three electrons, and mu B is the Bohr magneton, and it is given by. E H divided by four pi m e, where m e is the mass of the electrons. Okay, the spectral separation between the lower and the upper state is delta E, which is equal to G E mu b b zero for unpaired free electrons. This equation implies, since both G E and mu b are constant, the splitting of the energy levels is directly proportional to the magnetic field strength. Okay. so this is what we have also seen in the case of nmr spectroscopy however if you look over here this levels these energy levels um, which is away from this barrier center they are called degenerate or non degenerate energy levels so at zero at b equals to zero we call it degenerate level and then when this energy things they are being on magnetic field they are being split up they are it is regarded as non degenerate energy levels and as we increase the strength of the magnetic field the delta e it increases the delta e it increases now there is an interesting fact to see over here if you see Means it is equal to minus half, whereas in the case of NMR spectroscopy, at the lower end we were having plus half. Okay. Now why this is so? This is so because in NMR spectroscopy we were talking about the movement of the protons. Okay. And when we are talking about the movement of the protons. if you see over here the north pole was generated on the top and the south pole was generated in the uh, bottom layer okay on the contrary if you talk about the movement of the electrons the same type of movement in the same type of movement we will be having the north pole at the bottom and the south pole at the 
top so there is a change in the magnetic field generation okay so there is a there is a change in the direction of the magnetic fields when this charge atoms uh, this charge particles they are moving hence in the case of nmr our lower state it was considered as plus half or the alpha state in this case in the in your epr or esr the lower state it is having a value of minus half whereas the higher uh, energy state it is having a uh, net magnetic moment of plus half okay now these unpaired electrons they can change its electron spin by either absorbing or emitting a photon of energy h mu absorbing means when it is in the low energy state it will absorb and it will come to the high energy state and due to that there is a change in the electron spin and that's why it is going to the high energy state and while releasing it it is able to emit the photons microwave photons basically <clears throat> and just like in the previous case when this transition will happen when these electrons they will be absorbing the microwave radiation they will only absorb the microwave radiations when omega is equal to gamma b0 and here the gyromagnetic radiation is basically gyromagnetic uh, gyromagnetic uh, factor of the electrons okay so omega equal to gamma e plus b0 over in subtle cases we have delta b also and this delta b it is due to the what you call <coughs> due to the shielding effect exerted by the protons okay so the great majority of epi measurements are made with microwaves in the frequency region of 9 to 10 giga i mean sorry gigahertz okay with phase corresponding to about 0.35 tesla okay now a typical eps spectra it would look like this however if you see this peak it is quite broad so due to this reason uh, the scientists they prefer to derivatize the obtained peak and obtain a first derivative with gives us a comparatively narrow peak and it helps us in a better analysis okay now the peak it may be either a single peak it may be a doublet peak it may be a triplet peak what is a doublet peak and what is a singlet peak singlet peak means there will be only one peak double peak means there will be two peaks okay in the nm also we have seen the same thing in the triplet peak we have three peaks and so on okay <clears throat> now why we get uh, broad peaks so in the case of e emissions because the relaxation time of the excited electrons is very short hence the peak in the eps signals are quite broad and this follows this inverse relationship relaxation time is inversely proportional to the width of the epr and due to this reason we can see that the epr signals they are quite broad signals as compared to the nmr signals okay however you have to keep in mind that in nmr samples the time of the measurement it would be greater compared to the epr or esr measurement time okay. 
Now, IPX spectra it can be generated either by varying the microwave frequency, as I already told you, while holding the magnetic field constant, or doing the reverse. I hope it is clear to you. In practice, it is usually the frequency that is kept fixed. Now, why? This is because <clears throat> the paramagnetic uh, centers, such as free radicals, is exposed to microwaves at uh, when exposed to the microwaves at fixed frequency, they have sharp peaks. They give us sharp peaks, and that is one of the major reasons. Okay. By increasing the external magnetic field, the gap between Ms plus half and Ms minus half energy states is widened until it matches the energy of the microwaves. And at this point, the unpaired electrons can move between their two spin states. Okay. Since they typically are more electrons in the lower state due to the max Boltzmann distribution, there is a net absorption of energy and it is this absorption that is monitored and converted into a spectrum. Okay. So what I mean to say is that in the lower state, what you uh, talk about, it is basically the movement, the magnetic fields which have been generated due to the movement of the unpaired electrons. So, EPS spectrum is usually represented either as absorption spectrum or as the first derivative of the absorption spectrum. The most common way to record uh, continuous wave EPS spectrum is the first derivative of the absorption spectrum. Okay. For microwave frequency of 988.2 megahertz, the predicted resonance occurs at a magnetic field of about V0 equals to H mu by G e mu B, which comes out to be 0.335 Tesla, which is equal to 3350 Gauss. <clears throat> now, hyperfine coupling constant of the nucleus is related, is directly related to the spectral line spacing, and in the simplest cases, it is essentially the spacing itself. So, what is this hyper, uh, hyperfine coupling constant? In the NMR, we have seen that the effect on the hydrogen peaks it can be um, governed or it can be modulated by the presence of the other hydrogen atoms. And if there are two neighboring hydrogen atoms, then our peak would be. Distributed or it will be split into three peaks. Now, the distance between these peaks they are regarded as hyper fine coupling constant and they provide information, structural information about the molecules. Okay, similarly, in uh, over here also we have the splitting of the peaks and we will be discussing about the splitting of the peaks in a few moments time. Okay. Now two common mechanisms by which electrons and nuclei interact are Fermi contact inter interaction which are basically isotropic interactions and they are independent of the sample orientation in a magnetic field. And secondly dipolar interaction where we have anisotropic interaction and it is dependent on the sample orientation in the magnetic field. Okay. Then spin polarization is a third mechanism for interaction between an unpaired electron and a nucleus spin being specially important for high electron organic radicals such as benzene radical ions. Okay. So primary are fun contact interaction and the second are dipolar interaction. However, in the case of uh, radicals which are having pi electron organic radicals uh, such as benzene radical and ion, uh, this third kind of mechanism can play an important role. <clears throat> the symbols A and capital A, they are used for isotropic 
hyperfine coupling constant like b it is usually employed for anisotropic hyperfine coupling constants okay so while giving the peaks we can uh, denote this peak uh, whether we are getting this peak uh, splitting due to isotropic hyperfine coupling constant or due to the uh, anisotropic hyperfine coupling constants the g factor value the knowledge of this g factor give, can give information about a paramagnetic center's electronic structure okay and unpaired electron response not only to the spectrometer's applied magnetic field b0 but also to local magnetic fields of the molecules accordingly the effective magnetic field experienced by the electrons it would be bf equal to b0 multiplied by 1 minus sigma now this sigma it is um, a factor which includes the effects of the local fields and this sigma can either be positive or negative now if you see over here uh, we are having a series of microwave bands it starts from l and it goes up to this and dash so over here if you see the wavelength is decreasing however our frequency is increasing <clears throat> for the epl experiments what we have is that we have we basically use this x band and uh, q band microwave radiations for the development or for the analysis of the epl uh, spectrum or for the generation of the epl spectrum okay so epl experiments they are often conducted at x and less commonly in q bands so mostly it is being conducted at this x band level okay. so why it is so this is because <coughs> there is a ready availability of the necessary microwave components for these two levels which originally were developed for ladder application the same thing is that so a second reason for widespread x and uh, q band measurement is that electromagnets can reliably generate fields up to one tesla okay. another important thing is that if you work in a low frequency region if you see in the l band if you go for the analysis of the tempo here in if you see the band it is quite shorter in length however as you go towards sorry as you go towards high frequency components the same peak if you see over here it is divulging you more information so somewhere you have to come to a compromise and you have to find out what kind of analysis you want to do if you go for low frequency analysis the resolution will be lower now why the resolution will be lower let's go into the this degenerate degenerate to non degenerate levels at lower frequency if you see the energy level it is very low low delta energy and as we increase the frequency or we increase the magnetic field this delta e value it increases so as i told you there is an improved resolution as we increase the um, what do you call uh, the frequency of the analysis uh, analysis instrument or the microwave right now coming to some of the examples let's see this h plus sign we have and if you look into the energy levels initially it will be having 
minus half and plus half and over here we will be having one proton or this proton will split this level into two levels and the same level into the two levels so if you see ms minus half this is for the electrons and here we have again for the electrons because this ms it is coming over here this ms it is coming over here because this ms level it is being it is being split okay so ms equal to minus half and ms equal to minus half so the magnetic activity due to this uh, proton it would be minus half and plus half okay this is due to the proton activity similarly in the if you go to the higher level it would be the opposite okay ms plus plus it would be the same over this mi it would be the opposite in the higher level now how many transitions are there there are two transitions transition 1 and transition 2 are there now at low resolution you will see the peak like this low resolution means either low magnetic field or no frequency okay however if you increase the resolution either by increasing the magnetic field and the uh, frequency component in that case if you see we are able to pick up two peaks together okay so this one peak it is now be split into two and this is called uh, this is uh, a doublet peak so we have this doublet peak right similarly if you have h2 plus um, ions where we have two protons so here i have just shown um, these levels so please check it out so the basic funda is that in there will be two transition so in the first one both the electrons will be in the up direction in the second level we will be having one uh, electron up one electron down and uh, in, there is another case it may be low and the high and in the lowest level it will be all the thing will be downward and so these are the direction of the electron spins okay now it is a triplet in our previous case we have discussed the pascal's triangle so over here we have 1 is to 2 is to 1 for the triplet just like in mr over here also we have 1 is to 2 is to 1 uh, uh, what do you call intensity ratios of the triplet peaks then coming to this uh, ch3 uh, radical where we are having three protons so the chances of on the electron spins over here are like this all the three electrons on uh, facing upwards here two electrons facing upward one electron facing downwards and these are the three possible ways then we have <coughs> two electrons uh, facing downwards and one electron when it is facing upwards and the other two possible movements and in the last one where all the three uh, one movements they are generating field in the uh, reverse direction okay so uh, what would be the uh, so uh, how you get this peaks so the peaks over here it will be 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 the what do you mean by peak these are the intensity intensity of the peaks So for the intensity of the peaks like this, we will be having one to three to three to one. So over here we are having quadruplet splitting. Okay. So this we are having the base electron movement. So it is a low resolution. And from here, for three spin half increase, we will be getting peak position one to three to three to one. and for the other two cases we have already discussed this now if you want to generalize this thing again 
the Pascal triangle plays an important role in detecting what should be the intensity ratio. Now this is one. So if you see over here, if I place a zero on the left hand side of n equals to zero, if you add these two, zero plus one is one. Similarly, one plus zero. If we get into over here, we will be having zero plus one, and one plus one is two. One plus again zero is one. Here we have zero plus one one. One plus two to three. Two plus one three. Then one plus zero. Similarly, zero plus one. One plus three equals four. Three plus three equals to six. Three plus uh, one equals to four, and one plus zero equals to one. So in this way, you will be able to see uh, if how many protons or the how many uh, these things are there. Depending proton means are there. Depending upon that, you can find out the intensity uh, intensity ratio of the peaks.